Hello, everybody. Really quick, let's set the record straight on something. You see this that I just removed from the camera? This is a lens cap. It's a circular object. My habit is, whenever I start filming, I remove it from the camera and I put it in my pocket. And there it stays until the end of the day. We have been getting these comments. She has been seriously upset, so she has to set the record straight. I have been so We've upset. We've gotten emails and comments about Maya chewing tobacco. Which... You do not, yes. <laughs> Some do, and it's okay. And I guess the thing is, is that they come in a round tin, and people often keep it in their back pocket. Makes sense. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I have COVID. Yes, the plague caught us, and time seemed to slow down. We weren't seriously ill, but we weren't great either. The most annoying part was the waiting. We've only got 90 days in the States this time, and we've got so much to do on the boat. When all symptoms finally lifted, we stumbled back into the workshop, feeling disjointed and behind schedule. Feels good to be out here again. I do feel a lot better, but also advice that I took to heart was not to push it and to rest instead, because otherwise it just lingers for longer and it takes much longer to get back. So yeah, it's getting boring and I do wanna get back into it slowly, but um, I won't swing any hammers today. Before we got sick, we had just finished permanently installing the new blocks. We custom made each of these blocks to fit between all the deck beams, since the previous blocks and over half the previous deck beams had been plagued with rot. Now, with all new beams and new blocks installed, we can actually move forward with closing the decks and getting closer to having a watertight boat. This is actually a pretty big step in the refit. So to start, Aladino grabbed some cardboard and began making templates. The decks are made with two layers of plywood. These templates are for the first layer, and the second layer will be wider, allowing us to stagger the seams for added strength. Once the cardboard templates were done, Aladino cut the actual plywood pieces. Plywood decks again. So are these stained on the inside at this point? Not yet. Okay. Because no, you have to film that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we... Well, actually, this is a whole story. Should we tell the story of the plywood debacle? Sure. All right. Let's sit down. Story time, guys. All right. The plywood debacle. A lot of this happened when we actually had COVID, so I didn't film much of it. But here's the story. So... 
from the inside of the boat, the underside of the existing decks are this sort of really nice dark brown color. And we really wanted to match our repair, at least more or less, with that dark brown color so that it's not too jarring of a repair. So we started looking at different plywood options and we figured that Sapili plywood would be the best match and plus it would have the benefit of perfectly matching our blocking because our blocking is made out of Sapili. So with that decision made, we thought we will go buy some marine Sapili plywood. However, Eden Saw, our most trusted source, didn't have any in stock. So, and they weren't going to get any for a while, back orders, COVID, supply issues, all of it. So we started looking at other places. We found one place that had Sapili plywood. It looked really promising, um, but we were ordering it over the phone. Like we didn't actually see it ourselves. It arrived. We ordered several sheets of it. It arrived and it was completely not what we would expect for marine plywood. It didn't have enough laminations. The wood was really poor quality. Um, there were voids in it. It just wasn't what you want for marine plywood. And since it's super expensive, any kind of plywood, we didn't want to use stuff that wasn't what we wanted. So fortunately, they allowed us to return it and we got a full refund. We then went back to Eden saw our trusty source and asked what marine ply they do have. And all they have is Akume, which is this really, really light color. It's great plywood, but it's gonna make for a super duper visible repair from the inside. But this is our only option right now. Everywhere is sold out. There is no Sapili plywood to be had anywhere in Washington state. And so we are going with Akume and a nice brown stain to try and match it a little bit better with the interior. So that's the story. So at the moment, we've only got one sheet of Akume plywood, but there's more on the way. And that one sheet will be enough to get started. As for the color matching, it won't be perfect. The repair will be visible from inside, but adding a dark stain will help make the color difference slightly less jarring. It's been the kind of year I'd be fine if I forgot you. As the days progressed, we kept feeling better and better. The sun shone, the boat work moved forward, our energy returned to 100%, and we got an exciting delivery. Hello, Dini. Hello. What's been going on? We got a bunch of plywood delivered from Edensaw, yes. thanks to Greg. Greg is our Edensaw fairy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> our uh, plywood fairy. Yeah. That is really incredible. Helps out a lot. So huge, huge thank you. The plywood has been here only for a few days, but I'm already munching through it. <laughs> <laughs> munching. What a, what a good word to use there. Yeah. So one more cut to make. And then we have the top layer of plywood, almost finished. I haven't been in Which here filming, sorry guys. Stuff. The past few days have been hardcore editing days, but let's get let's get started on this now. All good things must come to an end. And I couldn't tell you what comes next. But I do know that we'll never ever be standing here again. to the memories I'll forever keep them here with me and I can't believe Just like that, we've munched through another little bit. <laughs> <laughs> 
the best is yet to come. So no plywood is glued in place yet, uh, not the first layer nor the second, but I've dry fitted the first layer. So the idea now is after the second layer is made that I make the cuts of where it shall go in place. Because um, of course to stagger the sheets uh, now as you can see this one extends four inches into the top, the old top layer, so I'm making the cut here. Uh, and peel this section off so that this one will fit like a glove and create the second layer. So that's next and it feels super exciting uh, to be closing up here. Really, really exciting and uh, rewarding uh, job. Now, I don't know if they like getting up in the morning, but oh, Mr. Sun is shining down on me. So you chipped your nail, you stubbed your toe, you lost your phone. Life's a rolling stone on a broken roller coaster. Okay. Scream shit, move on. Throw your hands up, move on. It's all good. Today is your day. Woo! Time is filled with swift transition. Put yourself in good position if you want. Things can go your way. Woo! Ain't no time to smell the roses. Gotta get to where the goat is. The road's already been paid. So the pieces for the deck are now all assembled, but there's still more to do before we can finally say that we've got solid decks again. So much prep work. Right now I'm preparing the location of where I want the fasteners to be. I do it by putting on the, the plywood and then I went down below and I marked where the beams were now that the first layer is not in place yet. Th that's the best way that I could come up with. The next step then was uh, in flipping it over, measuring where I want fasteners to be and then I'm mirroring it onto the piece of plywood. Then I mark it, I went down below, drilled all the holes, and then I plopped the plywood in place again, drilled the holes through the blocks and the beams, take the plywood away again, and then I check, and if I'm pleased uh, with where all my holes are, then I make the real deal and I countersink all the holes on top. So yeah, um, it takes a while, but on the other side, um, with this method, I'm really making sure that it will all go smoothly when, once we install it. Last thing, I also marked where the beams and where the blocks are on the top, and that's just um, for when we are putting everything down to have, uh, to have an X-ray vision. Because where I do have blocks and where I have beams, I know I can use a certain length of fastener but instead where we're only attaching the first layer of plywood with the second, we really don't want the fastener to be longer than three quarter of an inch, because otherwise we will see it from the, from the interior. So yeah, takes time, like everything, but I'm pleased how it's going and uh, soon I'm done. Ha <laughs> ha!
I think everybody has seen me vacuum before. We need to film it again. <laughs> Time to lift it off one more time. I want to double check if I'm pleased with all the hole locations. Otherwise, I'm gonna mark it right on the top again that I shouldn't use that one. But I've done 250 already and so far they've all worked out. Well. This one I'm pleased with. This one I'm pleased with. This one is perfect. Good, good. Good, 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 and so on. You get to the <laughs> works. Almost you, done. You seem mighty pleased with yourself, mister. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to plop it back on, and then I countersink all the holes, because um, oh, yeah. otherwise we have screw heads interfering with us later. Yeah, and I have one more on this side to do, and one more on that side. That was a lot of drilling today. Yeah, no yeah, kidding. But for a good cause. All right, I'm going to go inside and do some editing. So um, the dear right. folks at home can just imagine you countersinking the last, yes. the last parts. Exactly. <laughs> We're working under the philosophy that all wood installed on this boat should be protected with epoxy, and this plywood is certainly no exception. The bottom layer of plywood will even get extra special treatment since it will be visible from inside. Sanding and painting, sanding and painting, it's all part of the story. And I'm too scared to tell you what I want Cause when you come around I go away find out Ever deeper now, yes, I go low. Something in the way that I loved you in my day, and I'm too ashamed to say that now I just don't. And I don't want to die alone. So I think we're gonna move this episode towards the finish. It's actually been two and a half weeks in real time since we started filming this one, which is much longer than we normally spend on an episode, considering they come out every Friday. But we had COVID for the first week, so nothing got done or filmed. And then for the second week, it was a bit of a catch up. Dini was in here a lot. I was editing videos a lot and yeah, but we did get lots done. Um, and the fruits of our labors are kind of spread all over the workshop right now. This is the piece of plywood for up at the bow. It will close up the bow finally, which is really exciting. And over on the table here, we have the second layer of plywood that is going to close up our decks, remembering that we've got those two staggered layers. They're down on the table right now because Dini just finished coating them with epoxy uh, ready for installation. Uh, the top isn't covered in epoxy because we are going to fiberglass over top of the decks and there's going to be a lot of epoxy involved in that, so we don't see the need to epoxy it now. Over here, this is the bottom layer for up at the bow, so that arrow over there being the top layer. And this is what's going to be visible inside the V-berth. Chain locker. Chain locker, inside the chain locker. 
Over here, we have the bottom layer for closing up the decks, and these are finished a little bit nicer just because these are actually going to be visible from inside the boat, at least this side. So we used a stain here, and now they're covered in epoxy, and they'll also get varnished to try and blend in and be as beautiful as possible with the rest of the interior. I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, the Aquamade plywood was really light colored, and we were a bit worried about the color difference there, but with the stain, I think it'll blend pretty nicely with the rest of the interior. I mean, it'll be a visible repair, but it's part of the story of the boat at this point. And if we climb on up here, up here, nothing is too terribly different. I mean, everything is prepped ready for those plywood closures to go on, which is pretty thrilling. So soon our decks won't be quite so open, which will be great. And downstairs, there's been balsa repairs, there's been fiberglass coming out, but most excitedly now, most excitingly, we are gonna primer and paint a few things pretty soon, which, you know, is always the last 2% of the job, but like it's 98% of the pleasure because that's where things start to actually look nice. So I'm excited for that too. So that I think is the wrap up for this week's episode. Thanks so much for being here. I'm really stoked to be feeling healthy and good again, and I think, of course, Dini as well. And just before I sign off, I want to bring your attention to an event coming up soon in Port Townsend that some of you may be interested in. The Marine Thrift Shop is celebrating its grand reopening with a swap meet on April 2nd. The event will run from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., and there should be lots of interesting used boat parts, tools, and I'm sure stories to swap. For more details, check out the Northwest Maritime Center website at nwmaritime.org forward slash swap hyphen meet. As always, a huge thank you for watching. We're so happy we get to share these stories. It really, really does make me pretty stoked that I get to edit these videos and really think about how we're turning this whole experience into a story. I've found that that's actually brought a lot of enrichment to our own lives as well. An extra big thanks to our patrons for making these episodes possible. Every Tuesday, we release a real-time update on Patreon and yeah, there's lots of communication and everything that happens there. You can be a patron for as little as $2 a month. And it's absolutely the thing that keeps this channel going. So giant, giant thank you to the patrons. And of course, an extra big thanks to the folks whose names are now appearing on screen. These guys always go the extra mile to make sure that we keep being able to make videos and keep the boat project going. So thank you guys. We'll see you all next Friday. We are on the cusp of so many things at the moment. Get out! We've been waiting for this shipment for a long time. We knew it was coming. We've held off on a few big projects because we needed the contents of this. <laughs>